This is Twit. What I loved about this keynote was he was going up there talking about not his business, but the problem that the world faces. Right, right. And 99% of the keynote was, hey, everybody's denying climate change. Here is the chart of carbon. Here is a solution that will work. And he's trying to explain to people who are in climate denial and who believe that the world cannot solve its own problems and saying, you, you can solve your problems. If we put out, you know, 200 million of these in the world, we can get everybody off of fossil fuel. It is possible. And to give you an idea, if we put a billion of these in the world, well, we put a billion cars out in the world every X number, two billion cars in the world, like every 20 years. We can do this in our lifetime and we can make carbon go sideways. So this was a pitch to stop climate Wow. Change, not a pitch for now his own it. bankroll. And that's what now blew everybody away. It. it was like, it would be like if Steve mm -hmm. Jobs got on stage and was like, hey, the reason we're going to get these watches is because if we have everybody's health data, we can help everybody with that, you know, big data cure cancer eventually because we'll have everybody's right. data. This was transcended. It wasn't about him. It was about when I say change. When I say change the world, I mean change the world. Literally, when you get to those points that Jason just pointed out, and he also said, I can't do it alone. I would love for other companies to come in here and help me. Now, how many of these companies are going to sit around like Blockbuster looking at Netflix saying, oh, well, nobody's going to want that. That doesn't matter. And the next thing you know, they're ramping up. And they're like, wow, nobody's really coming into the store. And why is the grid not producing as much power as it used to? Oh, because people are getting these batteries. And the next thing you know, they're left out in the dust because somebody else is doing it. I hope to God that people get behind this and that for some reason, the older dinosaur carts of the world think about the future and change things because he literally said hey it's open source technology help me do it help me change the yeah. world here's how we do it he gave you a plan a blueprint and he's giving it to you on a platter let's so, go so i want to talk specific so what he's selling is a is a house size it's not a house size but it's a battery suitable for powering a house it's yeah. called power wall yeah um it is not that big i mean it's a small refrigerator maybe it's it thinner than that it's like um yeah it's only i think nine inches deep yeah or something like 12 and it's lithium deep. ion batteries it's the same batteries from the tesla because the whole floorboard of the tesla is a battery pack i've heard stories that people have actually taken their teslas apart for the batteries yeah and you put the battery on the wall like this boom yeah so that's what he basically made was he took the tesla technology put it there and what's really interesting is the story arc for elon was when he was starting spacex he started bringing in uh metal into this side of the factory and he i remember him touring and he said this is the metal we're going to use to make that rocket and then he had a machine in between that's going to press it then when he did Tesla, he's like, he took those same th lessons he learned and put it to Tesla to build the car. So when you go to the Tesla factory, materials come in here, car comes out there. He's not s making any of the parts from somebody else. Now, By the way, that's what Henry Ford did with the exactly. Rouge factory. He had box cars pulled up with timber and iron ore, coke, and it yeah. would make a car would come out the other end. The only thing that he was supplying, or two things he was supplying from other places was the drivetrain, the, um, the steering column was from Mercedes. And then, um, and I don't think it is in the next one, but the batteries he was getting from China. And he said, he, I remember him telling me, like, if, if they're not going to be able to make enough batteries for me. I got to make my own battery. Right. Uh, so that's factory. when the Gigafactory. And that's when the Gigafactory came in. And because one of the things that's happened is the stock price of Tesla has appreciated so much that he's been able to use that to take on bigger projects like the Gigafactory. The Gigafactory is going to produce batteries for everything. And this wall battery idea. Um, could change everything because if you store that electricity local and you got 10% of people to do that, we might not have to fire up the coal plants. We might be able to stick with nuclear, um, uh, hydro, Cle and solar. Choices. And the cleaner yeah. choices. And if you, if you think it's impossible, in Germany, they're phasing out nuclear and they've had days when they've been 60, 70% renewables. Now, these are weekend days, whatever. But, you know, you have France, which is 90% um, nuclear. And then you have Germany, which is like, you know, 30 to 70 percent renewables this can happen in the united states and when you we're going to get to the point where we'll have either free or close to free electricity if we do that desalinization is currently running at a penny a gallon there's new nanotechnology basically mesh filters where water can get pushed through because desalinization is just about energy the energy to push it through these nano things it's going to go down to a tenth of a penny per gallon when that happens if we can have the solar and the batteries and a decentralized grid we could be sucking the water out of the pacific ocean and we could make the deserts into wow. oases. So the whole world's going to change in our lifetime. And I think it's... And this is gonna, the first step. This is going to be part of the legacy that Elon has. Unbelievable. going to solve all these problems. And so I'm a techno-optimist, but mainly because of my friendship with Elon and seeing him do it, he, you know... It's quite impressive. He, 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 he does the not have the fear gene. Yeah, he has the courage. That's what people don't understand. Yeah. Zero fear in the man. Yeah. 
I mean, I saw him on the v uh, brink of a nervous breakdown, and he's told the story publicly about, you know, how he almost had a nervous breakdown during all this. And he was living off a loan from one of our famous billionaire f friends. And then, and he told that story publicly um, recently, and he, he brought it all back. But I mean, to have $200 million in personal wealth, shove it all into two companies, be living off a loan from your friend, and then come back from that, I mean, he has no fear gene. And he, one time, I remember one time he's like, hey, uh, oh, you're playing poker? Um, I wonder if I should learn how to play poker. I was like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to be the man valuable, responsible a very valuable for you learning attribute. how to play high stakes poker. No <laughs> effing way. Um, but he, wow. he's, he's a true, and he's a, he's a very funny guy. And I think what I like about his, his talk here is you're starting to see his humor. He's actually coming out of his shell a little so bit. So you feel like this is a, this is the Elon you know a little bit better. It's than we definitely know. the Elon I know because yeah. he was making jokes about putting his pinky up when he said yeah. billion and stuff like that. I kind of I liked what I saw. He's here. a funny yeah. guy. I mean, it yeah. was unplugged in a way. Keynotes rarely are. It was anymore. unplugged. Keynote, That's a good phrase. Keynotes are overproduced. They usually. I, I went to the build keynotes. They had like 27 people on stage. Yeah, yeah. There's almost nobody who even tries to pull off a keynote by themselves anymore. Even Steve Jobs, for many years, would bring a whole bunch of other yep. people on stage yep. and heavily rehearsed for weeks and. Never strays off the, the the prompter, but this is this is kind of loosey goosey. He's talking. His credibility is oh. built too. That's the thing that's going to yeah. be, you know, great. So let's talk about the this this thing is thirty five hundred bucks. This Powerwall battery yep. to the installer. What's gonna what? How does this work for the end user? I mean, I, do I need to install a solar array in my backyard, or does no, it matter? It doesn't matter. I mean, you put solar in, you would charge. For I would solar. like to do that because yeah. then I'd be off the grid, right? I could. Yeah, and then when you have these things like, I was just texting with Elon the other night. I was like, if we have another New York situation where New York lost power for three or four days, right. everybody in that city is going to put one of these in. Yeah, and so that's going to be the tipping point. And nobody really got this on Thursday night. But isn't it too expensive to do that? I mean, that's I a lot of money. No, right? thirty five hundred. If you own a house that's worth, you know, the average home in these major cities is now two, three million dollars. You're talking about one percent. Though the payoff less. cost of it. I mean, the people looking at the cost. You know, my my power okay. bill is so much, and this is yes. going to cost so much. It's going to take thirty years to pay. Twenty off. or thirty years to pay off. But think about this: How many people do you know who are putting backup generators in or buying a backup generator yeah. Keep, from? Home Depot for 600 bucks. What, that, what, that's, the, that's exactly what I was going to say. There are people that are in struck areas of this country where there's storms, there's outages that would right. want something like this because, one, it's fixated. You know what it is. A generator, a generator could go bad in a different way. It, you, have to, you have to have them outside your house. They cause fires. There's all kinds of other problems with those kind of generators and backup systems that you have currently. And if you did have solar, great. You're going to get free power. If you don't and you're in Alaska or somewhere down south or in the wooded area or off off grid anyway this is where that's going to start and then it'll expand out yeah it'll Most also be people paid love for. that feeling of being in control of themselves i think that that makes them feel much more empowered so that you're controlling the electricity that you deal with and you're helping out the environment at the same time it's not just about monetary gain right so i think that people will enjoy being able to do it all themselves and producing their own electricity and if they can being able to give back to the system how long would this keep me uh, with power? Is it a day? Is it a half a day? It's a couple of hours, I think. It really depends forever. on if you have your dryer, right. your dryer, and your washing machine, and your turn those off. Dishwasher. Those are the well. Uh, the yeah. well's electric. If I don't, if I lose my power, I don't have water. It's so there's an advantage to having. A, don't a be big surprised battery. if in a couple of years you see an incentive from uh, California or other I states. I think PG&E is already giving you credit because what's this. yeah, just like they did for solar, right. they're having a problem mm -hmm. as the um, cost of maintaining the grid goes up, something like this takes the strain off the grid. That's right. And so they it's are a, actually- It's a huge benefit to them. Huge benefit to them. So they'll subsidize it. And you're talking about like a dollar a day for 10 years, you'll have something like this in your house. For people who own homes, it's going to be a no-brainer. Yeah, um, the you, average have, home did cost you write Elon a check already for the I didn't buy this wall. one yet because I'm <laughs> renting right now because I moved up to San Francisco and I can't find oh, a house Oh, you moved up here. I'm living in Pack Heights right now. You're not living in beautiful Brentwood with the movie stars and... I still, I'm selling my house right now in Brentwood. I'm living oh. here. Well, you know what? It's like I was coming up here every week and I have a daughter now. It's just like too much commuting. So good. So we'll see more of you. Absolutely. I'm down the block. Awesome. Took me half I an hour to get here. I thought you drove here from L.A. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I stopped at three super trucks. It took me literally half an hour to get here. I was racing up. <laughs> Waze really is amazing. Did you have the original Sportster or no? This is. Your... I have the number 16 of the Roadster. And I have... That's what I thought. Yeah, I, thought, I still yeah. have that one. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have a picture of me stuck in that, actually. In, in my that car? traffic? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Jason let me sit in it out front, and I couldn't get out. Oh, I so, remember that. Yeah. yeah. I showed yeah. people that picture. Oh, yeah, I sat in the taco yeah. with Tesla. I, could, I mean, I couldn't drive it because my feet wouldn't reach the pedal, but I got it one. I couldn't get out. They had to, like, jaws of life me, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're gonna do uh, this. I'm ex now you got me really excited. I was excited before, but now you've got me really excited. I'm way more excited than I was when I came here. Yeah, he, cha he changed the world. When you when you hear the stories and all the movies you've ever seen in life, one man can change the world. Blue, blue, blue. We watch Night Rider. You, uh, one man can make a difference. Elon Musk is Night Rider. He's dead. Michael he Devin. He's doing it.